Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixelvert.com. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at whether it's possible to use GIMP in 2019 with just 8 gigs of RAM. So let me just explain what's going on here. I've got the dashboard open and of course if you've used the dashboard you know it's possible to monitor what's going on inside of GIMP. That's really useful to tell you whether or not you need to upgrade your system. But I thought let me test what happens if you downgrade your system. So we're going to be seeing if it's possible to work with just 8 gigs of RAM. Now at the moment there's no image open. GIMP is using 450, 430 megabytes. The amount of RAM available is 5.8 gigs and we've got 7.9 total gigs available. Let's go ahead and open up an image and you'll see now GIMP is using 170 megabytes of RAM for this one image. And it's just a stock image at 5000 by 3500 pixels. This is the kind of image you'll find coming out of most cameras. We're going to see what it takes to get GIMP to start failing. And I think that's the best way of actually doing this. A spoiler alert, it's possible to use GIMP with 8 gigs of RAM. You're just going to have to avoid doing a lot of multitasking. So let's see what happens when you really push the GIMP. We're going to start off by going to image precision and we're going to change the precision to 32 bit floating point. This is the recommended working space. This is the recommended working mode for the GIMP. And if I hit convert, you'll see that the amount of RAM being used now, the amount of memory has gone up to 733.9 megabytes. That's a huge leap. So obviously increasing your bit depth is one of those things that increases the amount of RAM usage. The other thing is that there are a lot of images now that are around 8,000 pixels wide. A lot of the stock agencies use images from some of these huge megapixel cameras and they also blow up the image sizes quite a bit. So it's not unrealistic to have an image that's at 8,000 pixels wide. Let's go ahead and scale this image. It's giving me a warning telling me that the image is going to be 1.6 gigabytes once we scaled it. Let's scale and see how much RAM it's now taking up. It's now gone up to 1.9 gigabytes of RAM. The available RAM has gone down to 3.8. Now obviously we didn't have the full 8 gigs available to GIMP when we open because Windows is using its own amounts of RAM and there are programs running in the background that are using their own RAM amounts. So what I want to do next is to really push things and see if we can use up that remaining 3.8 gigs. And to do that I'm going to use one of the cursed filters inside of GIMP through these G filters. These are the Geggle filters from GIMP 2.10 and then there are the older filters from GIMP 2.8. Some of these are cursed. They use up huge amounts of RAM, sometimes seemingly unnecessarily. We're going to run one of those right now, which is the Wavelet Decompose. This one, we're going to run it at its default settings. Now, because this is a really intense filter, it takes up a lot of system resources. We're going to break recording and then come back after it's done. I'm going to hit OK and then come back once it's finished. What you'll notice is that the available RAM has gone back up to 1.7. Well, it's gone down to 1.7, but it was as low as 4 or 5 megabytes at one point whilst that particular filter was running. So that level of RAM usage was huge and GIMP was not really leaving a lot of RAM for other things that were running. So that's one of the reasons I decided to switch off the recording software because it really didn't have enough resources to continue working whilst GIMP was, was doing this. The other thing you, you'll notice is that the image size has gone up to 17.7 gigabytes. Now we can reduce that image size by clearing the undo. So I'm going to go to the undo dialog and we're going to clear about 10.6 gigs of RAM. 
and now the image size has gone to 7.1 gigs. Now, here's the thing. We created, I think, six layers with that particular filter. And the image now takes up 7.1 gigabytes, which is more than the amount of RAM that we had available, which was about 5.8 gigabytes right at the beginning. So the basic idea here is that one way in which you can really push the the computer beyond its limitations as far as RAM is concerned is to create lots and lots of layers working at 32 bits and also to have lots and lots of undo steps. Now you can control some of these features by going into edit preferences and you can go into the system resources and change the number of undo levels but basically you don't want to get to a point where you are working with a very small number of undo levels because if you make a mistake then you're not going to be able to to go back so i think we've kind of reached the limits where we can tell just how much ram we need and in this particular case if i was working with this type of image at 32 bit using using lots and lots of layers i would need more than eight gigs of ram but if i was working with small images thumbnails and icons I could probably get away with eight gigs of RAM. Probably wouldn't be able to do too much in terms of multitasking. So I might need to keep the web browsers closed or I might need to limit the number of tabs that I'm using whilst running those web browsers. But otherwise I think it's possible and I think it's just a question of whatever your particular setup is, whether or not you can actually get away with just eight gigs of RAM. But that was it. I hope you found some of that useful. If you need to get more gigs of RAM, I have some links in the description where I found some pretty decent offers, but I'm interested to know what sort of setup you have and how much RAM you think is necessary for your own operations. Um, do you use Linux? Do you use, do you use Windows? Is one better than the other one for you? We'll leave it at that. I will see you next time. Bye.